Good morning. Today we're in Springfield, Illinois to check out the sites of our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. We're approaching his old neighborhood now. Today we're going to try to check out as many sites as we can. There may still be some closures with everything going on in the world right now, but we will see what we can get into and check out as many sites as we can. Now the home up here on the left is the home that Lincoln lived in. The address was 413 South 8th Street on the corner of Jackson. It was bought by Lincoln and his wife in 1844 and they lived in it until 1861 when Lincoln left for Washington to begin his presidency. This is the only home that Lincoln ever owned. The Lincolns paid $1,200 for this house and some land from Reverend Charles Dresser in 1844. Charles Dresser actually performed their marriage ceremony in 1842. At the time, this house was only one story, but the Lincolns expanded the house to meet the needs of their growing family. Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, donated this house to the state of Illinois in 1887 under the condition that it would be forever well maintained and open to the public at no charge. A little bit ironic that it's closed today, but that's really only for the pandemic. Generally, the home would be open from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. The site is usually only closed on New Year's Day, Christmas Day, and Thanksgiving Day. Tickets are free, but you have to pick them up at the visitor center just down the road. The entire neighborhood is pretty much completely restored, at least to a degree that the Lincolns would have recognized it. There's little doubt that Lincoln would have spent many days and nights walking the same path on his way to church, work, or anywhere else. This is a really neat walk if you ever get a chance to visit. It's really only two blocks long. They're kind of long blocks, but it's worth it. There's a lot of houses to look at. There's information plaques in front of them. And some of the houses you can even go inside and take a look, and it'll tell you who the people were that lived there and what their relationship was to the Lincolns. Now right here they have a spot set up and this is the location where the where the home is most frequently photographed from. Most pictures that you'll see of the Lincoln home would have been taken from right about here. It's kind of hard to see it through here, but I gave it a shot. On almost any day you'll see a steady stream of people right here taking photos of the home.
That's the shot right there. It's actually what's usually on postcards, too. Now we're walking behind Lincoln's home, and we'll just see if we can get into the backyard. They usually leave this open, and it looks like it is right now. And here would be the most important place of the house tour. Now back then there wasn't any indoor plumbing, so when you had to do your business, it had to happen out here. Could you imagine walking out here when it's 10 degrees below zero in the middle of the night, trekking through the yard in the snow, and that just doesn't sound fun. But this is the back of the house. I'll walk up so you can see well, what there is to see today. This is the new Illinois State Capitol building. I guess it's not really new. It was constructed in 1868, or it started in 1868. It was a 20-year process, and it, the total cost was $4.5 million. Now, Lincoln would have never seen this building complete, obviously. He worked at the old Capitol, which we'll go to next. But this is a pretty awesome building. It's closed today for the pandemic, just like pretty much everything else we've tried so far. But I'll walk around it so you can get a feel for it. And it's, it's a huge building. Usually you can go into it and you can wander into people's offices. And There's a lot of great artwork to check out. It's worth walking around in there if you get a chance. since we can't go in today this is what the Senate chamber looks like and this would be the dome from the inside now here on the right this doesn't really have anything to do with Lincoln but it's still a pretty cool site in Springfield if you ever come here this is kind of a must-see if you can get in to check it out this is the Illinois Governor's Mansion. Currently it's the home to J.B. Pritzker. And the home was completed in 1855. It's 16 bedrooms. And it was first occupied by Governor Joel Matson, who held the official grand opening on January 10th of 1856. It's one of the oldest houses in the state of Illinois and one of three oldest continuously occupied Governor's Mansions in the states. It's often decorated pretty neat. Right now there's a lot of people that tied ribbons to the outside to remember loved ones. It's kind of nice that they do this. Zoom in as much as I can here to give you a look at it. Now the governor and his family are not required to live in this mansion. But there also is a seven-room private apartment on the second floor that's provided for the governor and his family. 
It is open for tours on select days, so I would look it up when you get a chance if you come down to this area. It's worth going through. There's a lot of neat things to look at inside. This is random, but I had to put it in the video. How often do you see a green elephant on the side of the street? Now up here on the left is the old state capital. For a little history on the state, from 1820 until 1837, the political capital of the state was actually Vandalia, Illinois, and then it was petitioned to move to Springfield around 18, in 1837. It was in 1837 that this building started, and it cost $240,000 back then, of which the city of Springfield paid $50,000 for their end. And right across the street here was Lincoln Herndon Law Office. This is where Lincoln would have prepared his cases and then just came across the way back to the Capitol to try his cases. This would have been the walk that Lincoln would have taken almost daily. Now Lincoln served as a state lawmaker here from 1840 to 1841, and as a lawyer he pleaded cases here before the state Supreme Court in this building from 1841 to 1860. It was in the Illinois House Chamber here that Lincoln made his famous House Divided speech in June of 1858 in announcing his candidacy for the U.S. Senate. It was in the same chamber in May of 1865 that his body was returned to lay in state, arriving from Washington, D.C. prior to final burial at Oak Ridge Cemetery, which we will visit in just a little bit. Here's a little better look at the Lincoln Herndon Law Office. This is located at 6th and Adams Streets. This building was built in 1841 and Lincoln's offices were on the third floor. During Lincoln's time, the first floor of this building was actually part of the post office. This is the spot where Lincoln departed Springfield for the final time. He left in 1861 and delivered an impromptu speech from the back of this building, thanking his friends and family in Springfield and embracing the beginning of his presidency.
These are also the same tracks that would have brought Lincoln home the next time for his burial in 1865. On April 15, 1865, President Lincoln died. That same day, a group of Springfield citizens formed the National Lincoln Monument Association and started a drive for funds to construct a memorial. Upon arrival of the funeral train on May 3rd, Lincoln lay in state at the Illinois State Capitol for one night. After a funeral and burial services the next day, his coffin was placed in a receiving vault behind this tomb at the bottom of the hill. And we'll go see that after this. In 1871, Lincoln and his sons were buried in this tomb. Although it wasn't completely finished yet. And Lincoln would not actually rest peacefully here for quite a while after. It's quite a story. The History Channel actually put out a DVD called Stealing Lincoln's Body. It talks about the grave robbery and all the things that happened to Lincoln's body after that, it, which he didn't actually rest peacefully until almost 40 years later. Now I'll take you through the tomb in silence.
Now the grave robbery attempt. This happened in 1876 and there was a guy named Big Jim Canale who was in business with a known counterfeiter who was thrown in jail. So he recruited two Chicago criminals, Jack Hughes and Terrence Mullen, to carry out a grave robbery attempt to steal Lincoln's body and hold it for ransom to get his friend, the counterfeiter, out of jail. Now the Secret Service was formed under Lincoln and it was to protect the, va the value of the dollar and to stop counterfeiting. At that point, the Secret Service was not meant to protect the president. But agents found out about this, and on the night of November 7th of 1876, the lawmen at a distance surrounded the tomb here and waited in the dark. After almost two hours, the would-be grave robbers appeared and entered the tomb right here. With crowbars, they managed to move the great stone block that covered the casket. A shot rang out, and a detective's percussion cap pistol had accidentally fired. Hearing this, the other police figured the robbers were firing at them, and they returned fire for a moment. During the confusion, the criminals escaped. Ten days later, Mullen and Hughes were caught and ultimately sentenced to a year in prison for grave robbery. Now, before Lincoln was brought into this tomb, he was held directly after his funeral in a temporary vault that's just down the stairs here. I'll take video of the entire way down, but I will speed it up just to save time. This is the receiving vault that held Lincoln's body until he was put in the temporary vault up the side of the hill, until he was put in the permanent tomb, at least until his grave robbery attempt, at which time he was moved from spot to spot, and way too much information to give here. But if you are curious and, and want to do some research, it is a fascinating story, and there's just too much information to give out in one video. But this is where Lincoln was kept, And that'll pretty much do it for this video. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, give it a like. And subscribe to my channel if you want to go on more adventures. I try to post new videos weekly. And I hope to see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.